The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development reports that homelessness in Montana grew by 45 percent last year. That's the third largest increase in the nation. In November, we brought you a story about the controversy over urban camping in ultra-expensive Bozeman. Now we are expanding our coverage west of the divide to another pricey community, Missoula. Montana PBS's Joe Lassar explores the options available to get people into homes as quickly as possible in two of the most expensive places in the state. Yeah, well, we're, we're still stumbling. We're not, we're not in an apartment yet. Stephen and Belinda Ankney say it's been a tough winter, living in their trailer on the streets of Bozeman. Since we spoke with them last fall, Bozeman's urban camping ordinance has taken effect. As part of the new rules, they've twice had to move their trailer, a process Stephen says has been difficult. Belinda's legal troubles are a barrier to them finding housing, and Stephen's medical issues are a barrier to them affording it. They've tried to go after housing resources available in town, but the system is strained, as the number of people experiencing homelessness in Bozeman has nearly doubled since 2019, according to HRDC President Heather Grenier. It's remarkably difficult because there's no pathway for us to help them. There's no housing. There's no rental assistance to help them get into a housing unit, even if there were a housing unit. There's no transitional housing. To meet immediate needs, HRDC's warming shelter switched to year-round service in 2022. And last year, local nonprofits Haven and Family Promise opened new shelter facilities. I think that will meet the sh emergency shelter needs for our community, certainly. Um, now we've got to focus on transitional housing and housing needs. In the past year, rental prices have cooled off and vacancy rates have ticked up. Those hopeful trends pair nicely with the nearly 1,800 housing units currently in various stages of development across the city. According to the city of Bozeman, 411 of those units will be exclusively eligible to households making no more than the numbers on your screen. The units will be federally subsidized so that residents pay no more than 30% of their monthly income. While that's welcome news, the Ankenys take it with cautious optimism. I think Bozeman's actually really trying. I, the, the commission, the, the city, it's just, this town is expensive. While they wait to see if some housing assistance comes their way, they're doing what they can, in between the struggles of their daily lives, to find something on their own. One of the biggest misconceptions is that uh, we want to be here, that we're not trying to get out. It could be easier for them somewhere else, but that would mean leaving their three daughters, who live with a relative in nearby Belgrade. And I don't want that to go away, and I don't want that to stop. I mean, I, um, I work too hard. That's our savior. That's what's saving us. That's what's keeping us going. So for now, they're trying to get through the winter as best they can. As communities work to address affordable housing shortages, what sort of assistance is there in the meantime? For just under 16,000 Montanans, assistance comes from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's Housing Choice Voucher Program. The participant in the program, the family, the tenant, um, pays 30% of their adjusted monthly income toward the rent, and the federal housing assistance payment covers the difference between that tenant's portion and up to a maximum voucher payment standard. Vouchers are issued by public housing authorities, and they can be used wherever a landlord accepts them. This gives voucher holders the flexibility to move without losing housing assistance. They can be life-changing for those who get them, but the system is not without its shortcomings. Cheryl Cohen oversees the statewide public housing authority that's run through the Montana Department of Commerce. She says getting a housing choice voucher through the state can take anywhere from a few months to a few years. It's a six and a half year wait in Missoula's region and 10 and a half years in Bozeman's. And as rents sharply rose over the past few years, the maximum amounts that vouchers will cover have struggled to keep up. In some areas, they haven't even kept up with prices at below market rent restricted properties. So if they can't keep up with a restricted rent, they're certainly not keeping up with private market rents. Um, and you know, we don't uh, berate landlords for making economic decisions. Of course, they have to pay maintenance for their properties and property taxes. 
a voucher holder has between 60 and 120 days to get into housing. If they're not able to, they lose their voucher. Super challenging to wait that long for a voucher and then not being able to use it. For the state's second largest housing authority, navigating this gap between voucher payments and rent prices is uncharted territory. It was never a thing. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even track our success rate for years because it, it was just like, yeah, they succeed. Jim McGrath is in charge of voucher programs at the Missoula Housing Authority. He says during the pandemic, they saw about a 20% decrease in the number of vouchers that were successfully used. Between high rents and low vacancy rates, um, those places were just so hard to find. McGrath says that downward trend has leveled off, but that the mismatch between voucher payments and rent prices continues to be an issue. But there is a way for housing authorities to try to work around it. They're allowed to take a certain percentage of their vouchers and attach them to a specific property, ensuring that affordable units will be available. They're called project-based vouchers. The advantage of that for the tenant nowadays is that you don't have to find a unit that you can afford. So it do deals with both affordability and, and availability. 32 Housing Choice vouchers are attached to the recently opened Villaggio apartments. The rest of the 200 units are federally subsidized for households making no more than the numbers on your screen. The average three-bedroom rental price in Missoula is $1,731 a month. For a family of four at the top end of the income limit, a three-bedroom rental at Villaggio costs $1,220 a month. Last year was a big one for the Missoula community in terms of affordable housing. In addition to Villaggio, Trinity Apartments added another 202 rent-restricted units. Rental assistance might be all some people need to get back into housing, but for others, there are more barriers. About a third of Missoula's homeless population are considered chronically homeless. On the streets a year or more, or repeatedly, and struggling with a disabling condition, like mental illness, a substance abuse disorder, or a physical disability. Statewide, chronic homelessness has risen by 551% since 2007, the largest increase of any state in the U.S. Providing housing to those with the highest level of needs, plus supportive services to help with their underlying issues, is the idea behind permanent supportive housing. Again, with all the modern amenities you'd find in a market-rate apartment, we have energy With partnership star, between local government and a number of nonprofits, nice 31 units of permanent supportive housing opened last September. The key to perma successful permanent supportive housing is having the, the necessary wraparound services on the property. In other words, there is 24-7 staff here uh, on site at Blue Heron Place to work with residents through a myriad of issues. Residents pay 30% of their monthly income. The wraparound services are voluntary. In addition to improved housing stability and health outcomes for people, this model has been shown to be an effective way of mitigating costs associated with chronic homelessness. Fewer trips by emergency services, fewer trips from the police, fewer negative interactions with, with community members and with uh, businesses in town. Because it is permanent supportive housing, Turnover on these units can be years. Folks who get in can stay as long as they want. But for people whose needs aren't as intensive, Missoula's temporary safe outdoor space offers a similar supportive model, but on a quicker time frame. Probably like 120 to 180 days like is the average stay here. These 30 hard-sided trailers opened last January. With the help of community partners, the site is staffed 24-7 and during the week by a social worker and peer support specialists that are there to connect people to services. Doing um, life skills and working with other businesses and seeing how we can get them plugged in. Um, we do work with like mental health and substance abuse. They come on and we meet them where they're at and then we work with them to try and move forward. Missoula native Michael Voss was unhoused for five years before getting a spot here after completing a drug rehab program this fall. He says having a place to himself has helped him stay focused on his sobriety. It's kept me off the streets, kept me away from my friends and stuff that would 
potentially pull me back into the addiction and make me lose my priorities and what's important. Voss is working and saving money for a place of his own. His criminal record makes that process complicated, but he says that in a few weeks, he'll have some extra support. Waiting for my girlfriend to get out of treatment so we can try to navigate that road together. These newly expanded housing options appear to be moving the needle on homelessness in Missoula. According to numbers recently shared by the city, the homeless population is the smallest it's been since before the pandemic. However, uncertainty looms over a key piece of the community's homeless response. The last of the city and county's COVID-era American Rescue Plan money is currently being used to run the Johnson Street Emergency Shelter. That money runs out in September. Missoula Mayor Andrea Davis says finding sustainable funding before then will remain a major priority for the city. You know, it's a big question and a big concern, actually, about where we will be able to find the money to be able to do this. And it's important that we do it. So we are talking um, internally. We have, I think, some important conversations to have with the community. There's a desire and a need to relocate the shelter eventually, and that work is also underway and needed. The city is in the process of updating its growth policy and universal development code. Davis says it's an opportunity to evaluate the recent housing successes and figure out how best to build on them. The more we can build at every single level, both rental and home ownership, um, in a way that still preserves the character and the enjoyment of our community. And that's not an easy task. There is lot to, lots to debate in that space. The new Universal Development Code is expected to be adopted late this year or early next year. For Impact, I'm Joe Lassar. Meanwhile, the battle over urban camping will reach a new venue. The U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to review the landmark case that allows people to camp in public places if no shelter beds are available. Oral arguments are scheduled to begin on April 22nd.